1992 on paper looked like a quiet hurricane season. There were no early season storms and August came in like a lamb. The previous year had been a cakewalk of a hurricane season too, other than in New England when Hurricane Bob made landfall. It came ashore as a Category 2 with a 12 to 15 foot storm surge in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. 1992 started with next to nothing. The first robust tropical wave didn't even roll off the coast of Africa until August 14th. Over the next several days, the clumping of downpours and thunderstorms churned across the Atlantic, but it was a sleeping giant. By August 16th, it developed into a tropical depression, meaning it was a 30 to 35 mile per hour storm and had a cohesive center. At that point, it was more than 1,600 miles east-southeast of Barbados. At the time, it was struggling against wind shear, or a change of wind speed and or direction with height. It was essentially playing a game of tug of war with the storm, meaning it couldn't develop. But the next day that shear relaxed, and Tropical Storm Andrew was born. On August 18th, it teetered. The mid and upper level circulations were vigorous, but the hurricane hunters struggled to locate a concentrated low level area of spin. Andrew became a hurricane though on August 22nd, about 650 miles east southeast of Nassau in the Bahamas. Initially, Andrew was forecast to make landfall near Jupiter, Florida with 105 mile per hour winds, i.e. a category two. That forecast though would ultimately change. Then Andrew rapidly intensified. On the 23rd, it hit Eleuthera in the Bahamas as a Category 5 with 160 mile per hour winds. It continued west, weakening briefly before strengthening even more over the Gulf Stream. The storm blasted ashore early in the morning of August 24th, 1992, making landfall in Elliott Key in Florida as a 165 mile per hour Category 5 buzzsaw. Its air pressure at landfall was 922 millibars, which meant that it was missing about 8% of the atmosphere's ambient mass. In other words, the storm vortex was a powerful vacuum. The deeper that deficit, the faster the hurricane has to spin to prevent it from filling in. That's exactly what it did. It was a narrow storm, but it had gusts topping 180 miles per hour. At the National Hurricane Center in Coral Gables, winds gusted to 164 miles per hour. Then the anemometer blew away. At the Turkey Point Nuclear Generating Station, a sustained wind of 146 miles per hour was clocked before the instrument also failed. Meteorologists at the Hurricane Center had battened down the hatches but a few had been sent up to Maryland as a backup just in case the Florida office got knocked offline. One of the forecasters in Maryland was watching the news after the fact and saw his vehicle had been damaged by another car landing on top of it. The Corps of Andrew passed over Homestead, Florida, where more than 90% of all homes were destroyed. About $25 billion in damages resulted. Andrew's spiral rain bands unleashed scores of tornadoes. Closer to the eye wall, though, erratic strips of extreme damage resulting from winds estimated near 200 miles per hour were found. Ted Fujita later determined these were the result of mini swirls, or small transient vortices that form near ground level and get vertically stretched by a hurricane. It's believed that mini swirls can enhance winds by about 40 miles per hour. They're only the size and strength of dust devils, but they whip around the eye wall at category four or five speeds, meaning you combine the wind speeds and you get sudden gusts to about 200 miles per hour. Oddly enough, after the eye passed, some people said the winds were even stronger on the backside. There may have been some truth to that. Andrew maintained strength or even strengthened over land in South Florida, which is extremely unusual. That's due to something called the brown ocean effect, i.e. the land of the Everglades was so warm and wet and saturated that Andrew thought it was still over water. That allowed the storm to continue strengthening. It happens once in a while, like in 2007 with Tropical Storm Aaron over Oklahoma, which actually intensified over the Sooner State and produced winds between 70 and 80 miles per hour. Andrew eventually went on to make a second landfall on southern Louisiana with 115 mile per hour winds. Its remnants produced 26 tornadoes in the Mississippi and Tennessee valleys, 14 of which touched down in coastal Louisiana. One was an F3. Andrew was the last Category 5 to hit the United States until Michael in 2018. The next one might not happen for another 25 years, or it could happen next week. You never really know. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.